Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll learn about former North Dakota Governor Lynn Frazier. But first, joining me now is the director of Boys State of North Dakota, North Dakota Boys State, uh, Neil Litton. L Neil, thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. As we get started, we always do this. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself, maybe your background. Well, I grew up uh, down in Wapton, uh, back in the time when we were the Wapton Waps when I was there. and. Uh, Went on to science school and then to Moorhead State, got a degree in marketing ed, uh, took a job as a squirrel out in Central Cass and taught there for 35 years. And uh, last couple of years now, I've just been uh, sub-teaching in like West Fargo and Shanley and around the area. Okay, so uh, teaching's your background, but you also have a, another passion, I guess it has to be a passion, uh, in uh, messing around with football, softball, wrestling, what do you do? Yep, um, I coached uh, like junior high football for 33 years. I uh, started officiating uh, football and wrestling back in college for some extra money and that was back in 1978. And so this year was 40 years of football, 40 years of wrestling. I got into softball a couple years after that because guys on my football crew said, you should do softball in the summer. My wife said, you need a part-time job in the summer. I said, okay. So I started doing softball and been enjoying all of them since. All right. Well, Neil, we're here to talk about Boys State. Uh, first, let's, what is Boys State? Okay, Boys State is a program sponsored by the North Dakota American Legion. Uh, it's something that they started back in the late 30s to help educate young men about our governmental process. Uh, there was things going on across over in Europe and uh, the American Legion uh, decided that it was one of the things that they wanted to get started to help educate and uh, teach young men about how our, our philosophy of government is going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, last year was the 70. 75th year? year of North Dakota Boy State. Uh, we missed, uh, we had Boy State, it started down in Wapton, North Dakota. It ran there until World War II started. Uh, after World War II, it moved to uh, NDSU, and we were there till about 20 years ago. We moved uh, back down to Wapton, back to the roots of North Dakota Boy State, and the Legion has been very supportive of, and we've been running a great program all the way through. Yeah. Now, does every state in the U.S. have a yes. Boy State? Yes, okay. yep, all across the country, we've got Boy States going. Yeah. And it all turns into a Boys Nation program, because each state elects two people from their Boy State program to go to a Boys Nation out in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So when did you get involved? Uh, I got involved back in 1975, and this is a program that's opportunity between your junior and senior year of high school. And I had the opportunity to go to uh, Boy State. Um, I really enjoyed the program. Was fortunate to come back as a city councilor after that. Worked as staff councilor, and I've been the director for the last 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So, so you stayed involved. Yes. Uh, what made you want to stay that much involved? Um, just the style of leadership that the program offers. It's a, it's a hands-on. You know, I went through like my student council, student congress, you know, that stuff through high school, but this was more of a hands-on program where it was more learned by doing. You know, we elect our, our government and then we, the process evolves and it's different every time we do it. So every year it's different, it's new, it's you know, new kids, new ideas. Mm -hmm. So who's eligible to attend? Uh, anyone that has completed their junior year of high school going into their senior year. Um, and So how are they nominated, picked, or selected? Yeah. It's uh, more on the local legion. Uh, they, the local legion, because uh, you are, if you're picked out of Erie, North Dakota, the local legion has chosen you as a leader in that community. And the legion uh, pays the sponsorship for you to come to Boy State. So the Boy State doesn't cost them anything to get their local legion post uh, will pay for their costs. Mm -hmm. So w when is it every year or when is it this year? It generally, we try to work it around Flag Day in June, okay? And the mm -hmm. uh, 4th of, or 14th of July is a Thursday this year, so the kids will come in on that Sunday and leave on Friday, so we're looking the 10th of June through the 15th of June this summer. Yeah, 14th of June, I think you said July, but. Oh, oh sorry, yep, June. 14th of June, yep. Flag Day. Yep. Uh, so, uh, where is it, and, and how long has it been there? You said it's. it's, it's uh, we uh, we run it at the North Dakota State College of Science. Mm -hmm. They're very very gracious hosts to us down there, mm -hmm. and like I said, we've been down there the last 20 years, and uh, it's on the campus of the college there, and the administration, the staff, the faculty, everybody really helps us out down there. Yeah, you you talked a little bit about it, but what do, what do the boys learn when when they spend a week at Boys State? They learn a lot. Um, you know, we start with. You know, just uh, them meeting each other, and these are all leaders from all across the state of North Dakota. 
and we elect them into a legislative branch, a judicial branch, an executive branch, city, county government, and they get to do a function of each of those. Um, you know, obviously our big thing is you get elected to be the governor of North Dakota Boys State, and we've got an impressive list over those 75 years. But a lot of the, when the kids get done, a lot of them will come back and say, hey, you know what I really got out of this was the city, county government. And that's where most of these kids are going to end up. They're going to go back to, you know, Rame, North Dakota, and they're going to be the city commissioner, the mayor of Rame, whatever. And, and the things that they learn are very, very valuable once they get back to their local communities. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked a little bit about it. So how does the boys' uh, state governor election work? Okay, we, we break into two parties. We have a Nationalist Party and a Federalist Party. Now, they're not conservative, they're not liberals. They decide for themselves, they come up with a party platform for their party, each of them do. We have a party convention where they nominate their governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, and they do it both ways, and then they come together, and then we have an election, and from there, then they try to cooperate you know, sometimes Republicans, Democrats can do it, but I usually our, our uh, nationalists and federalists can do it a little better because they're, you know, a little more on the same grounds. But, yeah, they come up with their own, you know, and sometimes they're very conservative, sometimes they're liberal, and sometimes they work that way. And sometimes you have, because we don't ask them ahead of time, are you a liberal or are you a conservative? We just, we break them into two parties, and then they got to decide within that party, and they can have some very right-wing, left-wing wing people, and they got to try to compromise before they come up with their platform to present back to the boy staters. Mm hmm yeah. Well, can you mention you uh, some of the uh, former, I guess, North Dakota folks who have attended Boys State and uh, when they were in high school? Of course. Okay. Well, when I came back to when I went to Boys State in '75, the returning returning Boys State governor, because once you're elected, you come back to reign until a new governor is elected. And the guy that was the returning Boys State governor was a guy by the name of John Hoven out of Minot. <laughs> Obviously, went on to be governor, and you know, on from there. Um, uh, actually, all your legislators out of the state of North Dakota, both your senators, uh, Boy State, Girl State, uh, representative was at Boy State, uh, two guys that are uh, running for the House this time, um, both uh, Armstrong and Schneider, both have been to Boy State. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ed Schaefer is another, you know, been through the Boy State program, uh, Phil Jackson. Uh, came through the program, came back as a counselor. Governor Burgum came back as counselor. He was there like five years. Uh, his son Joe Burgum, who I just heard on the radio, was talking about local stuff as far as a Hawthorne development part. He's a president there, and he was governor of North Dakota Boys State. So, I mean, they're all around. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're dropping a few names. People ought to know a few of those. Uh, what about scholarship opportunities through Boy State? Uh, there are some. Uh, I know through the North Dakota State College of Science, they will they offer scholarships there. Uh, we do also offer like a high school half credit to uh, boys that go through Boy State, so you can get get uh, high school credit. Uh, we also help the high school boys out there. The legis legislator passed in the last session. Uh, they have to do a civics test now in order to graduate and we implemented that into our program so by the time you're done with our program you've got that civics test all taken care of so by the time you come back to your senior year of high school or you've got to do it it's already done for you mm. now you mentioned girl state so there's something comparable yes uh, at the university of north dakota there is a girl state sponsored by instead of the american legion the legion auxiliary sponsors the girl state program Mm -hmm. uh, they elect a governor. Their governor will come talk to our boy staters, and our boy state governor will go off to Grand Forks and talk to the girl staters. So, mm -hmm. do they run then the same week or? Uh, it... Most years they do. Or we have, uh, especially now, excuse me, trying to get uh, some buses across the state because uh, they're in Grand Forks and we're in Wapton, and we will run a bus like out of Dickinson and one out of you know Williston and bring them across the state just to kind of help out. But we're not always the same week, but uh, okay. we are this year. Okay. Uh, how many boys will participate this year, and what's the average per year? Uh, we're hoping about 125 this year. Uh, that's what we've been holding last few. I mean, we've highs and lows from there. Um, you know, back when I was going through, there was you know 500, 600 boys coming through, but you know it's you know dwindled a bit over the years. But mm -hmm. it's still a great program. The kids get done. They just say, ah, I wish I, I would have known about it, and I'd have told some more people. And so we try to encourage the boys to go back and. You know, you know, help promote it in their home communities. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, what other activities happen at Boy State besides what you've told us? Um, well, one of the things you know we found is you know try to get these kids from all around the state to meet each other. Uh, we inter integrate a like kind of a ropes course uh, through the uh, 
uh, the military program will come in and, and help us out with that. Uh, kind of gives them a, a footload on you know how to get things going. We have some, you know, rather than doing you know all day long, you know, we can't do that. So we have some recreation time where we do some sports activities, city against city. Uh, I remember seeing, you know, it's, if you look in the Roger Maris Museum, there's another boy stater. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a thing in there where his, uh, I don't remember, it was his baseball team or his football, you know, whatever team he had. You know, he's got things from Boy State at the Roger Maris Museum because, uh, you know, during the sports, you know, there's a lot of the athletic boys that are there, too. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you think maybe this serves as sort of a precursor to, to maybe getting ready to go to college, living in a dorm, being on your own? Oh, it certainly does. Uh, I mean, you can talk to these kids uh, year after year after they come back because we get to a lot of the city councilors. You know, I've just got done with their first year of college. They'll come back and say, boy, I really, you know, learned a lot about, you know, how to get along with people, how living, like I said, li living in the dorm is going to be. You know, it's you know, eye-opening for, like, again, you go to Stanley, North Dakota, you know, and the biggest thing you've seen, in, uh, you know, is the elevator. And now if you go to, you know, Mopton or NDSU, you've got these big college dorms and you're looking at that, you know, it's bigger than a local elevator. So it's like, <laughs> okay, well, let's talk then. You, you talked about how, uh, who funds the boys to go, but, but how is Boys State funded? Uh, it's, it's, it's a Legion program, you know, similar to like the Legion baseball program. There's a shooting sports program. There's an oratorical program that the Legion sponsors all of those. Um, and the State College of Science you know, gives us a price for, you know, a bed for a meal, and um, you know, and we've negotiated real well over the years with them on getting a, you know, a good price for that. And then we get some, you know, some donations from uh, local posts around the state and other people. Um, we worked uh, for years with the Disaster Emergency Management Group out of Bismarck, and there's some people from there that'll, you know, give donations. Um, we got a donation out of. You know, former boy stater from uh, down in Maple Grove. Uh, you know, so there's mm -hmm. different ways we can get donations through it. Yeah. So, so uh, how many, uh, I guess, paid staff are there at Boys? For well, boy there staff? really aren't any paid staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get a you know a stipend and so do my you know my city councilors. I mean, they basically get gas money to get to Wapton and back. They'll get like you know a hundred dollars for the week, and you know, you know a hundred dollars mm -hmm. hardly buys you you know your gas down and back. So. It's, yeah. it's, it's a staff of, we'll have uh, 30 to 35 staff, and it's pretty much all volunteer. I mean, I got, I got guys that'll fly back from Oregon. I got people out of the cities. I got my, one of my assistant dean of counselors is flying back from the United Kingdom to come back. Yeah. But he's a North Dakota guy. He's a Minot guy. He was living out in Seattle. Now he's working for Amazon over in the U.K., and he's coming back for Boys Take because it means so much to him. Wow. Well, you mentioned volunteers. We talked about staff. But... What about, because you, you have to have volunteers who, of course, can lead the boys, manage the dorm. Uh, talk about your volunteers. Well, it starts back when the, you know, the local legion post, each legion post has like a, a boy state committee and a chair there. And then across the state, there's 10 districts in the legion. Each one has a, a district chair. And then once they get down to Wapton, uh, it's our staff that's down there. That's and we work with the the colleagues because you got to have the you know the, the dorm people from the college that we work with. But it's our staff that you know supervises the kids in the dorms and. Mm -hmm. Well, you you talked about how I mean obviously the focus seems to be on on government and how government works and how it runs. But because what I witnessed with my son going was they have to debate things and. So tell tell us about that. Hey, we got a couple. Kind of, I think we are kind of fun debates. We do everything, uh, kind of as a precursor to our governor's debate because we got our two governor candidates mm -hmm. and we have them debate in front of the boy staters. But we generally will have like the day before that, we'll bring in like the party chair from North Dakota Republican and Democratic Party to kind of give a little flavor just from the state, and then the kids get to do it, uh, the governor candidates, but then we elect a House and a Senate, mm -hmm. and so we have, and, and when the kids come in, they'll come in with a, a proposed bill, whatever they think is from, you know, they've got a concern about, and we break those into committees, and the committees decide which ones are gonna get debated, and we have senators uh, debating, we got House of Representatives debating, we got the Speaker of the House, we got the President Pro Tem of the Senate that are, you know, running those, and we'll let the Lieutenant Governor run the Senate from time to time, and yeah, we have some just great debates. Um, uh, we have pres our, we got Parents Day on Friday morning. Parents can, can come in and see how the kids have been debating. The kids will pull a couple of, you know, bills that are going to kind of be fun and let the parents see how it works. And so yeah, we've got great debates going on all week long. Yeah. Now you talked about uh, you know the, the the boys that go, 
uh, and I can relate from my son who wasn't as outgoing and is involved. And so, so this really does expose them uh, to something that, that maybe they haven't seen before. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things we say is it's a, it's a leadership program and it's a, it's a week that can change your lifetime. And you get kids that come out of here that I've been like kind of quiet in high school and now they got, and you know, we get the comments sometimes and we, we proposed at one time, we put boy, boy state and girl state together. We thought that would help the numbers. The boys came back and said, hey, we do everything, you know, our, our uh, student council, our student congress, our speech debate, that's all boys and girls together. It's kind of fun that, not to say it's not great to have the girls around, but it lets the boys just be the boys and they're debating just with the boys. I mean, and we realize it's not that way in the real world once you get into, you know, the real house and senate because they're, you know, they're mixed together. But it's, it's a chance for some of these boys just to kind of come out of their shells and it does change them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the week though, and it makes a difference. Yep. Uh, you, you talked about, uh, so do you have any special speakers lined up for this year coming? Uh, we're still waiting on, and because it's election year, and so and I just, I talked to Max Schneider yesterday, and he is coming. Uh, we usually get, you know, Hovind usually comes, Heidkamp usually comes, Kramer usually comes. That's that's normal. And then, you know, with the Senate race, uh, they've both been invited, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's up to, you know, how that week's going to go. You know, are they in session? What's going on at the time? But, uh yeah. Uh, we got them, and, and we have uh, uh, President uh, Teddy Roosevelt. He's coming back to visit us on his way out to Medora. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, and uh, our Teddy Roosevelt is actually uh, a former Boys Nation governor or Boys Nation president. Was he? Yes. Okay. And yeah. he is going to stop by, and uh, oh, he is so fun to talk to in because he he is in that age that era in time and then to ask him some questions because the kids get to ask him some questions about current things and how President Roosevelt reacts to that and it is just wonderful to watch him interact. Well, with that said, and maybe that's the biggest one, but can you talk about some real success stories? Because uh, you've been around it for a long time. Uh, you were involved in the 70s, you're now leading it for the last uh, quite a few years uh, of people who maybe have made that comment, yes, Boys State really made a difference for me. Uh, oh yeah, there's so many. Some of those names I was throwing out earlier. Everybody, I mean, from the Roger Maris to the, you know, all the our former governors and whatever. But uh, one I just talked to uh, last week was uh, I'm trying to get together a little thing on. Um, it goes back to like uh, 1963 because I, when I tried to get my governors together for the 75th, you know, one of the um, guys I was trying to get a hold of was Jim Ramstead. He was a representative out of Minnesota area for a lot of years, uh, recently retired from the legislature down there. But trying to get him back, because he went to the 63 Boys Nation and him and Dave Bateman, a guy, he's uh, living now in Alaska. He was a pilot during the Vietnam War. He's come back a few times and talked to the impact that Boys State had on him and his experience in the war. But anyway, those two went to uh, uh, the Boys Nation program president at the time was President Kennedy and they talked about the fact that you know when they were they were all supposed to get in a nice little line to go shake President Kennedy's hand and there was one other there was a, uh, a Boys Nation guy out of Arkansas that kind of budged his way up to <laughs> shake Kennedy's hand first you know who that was? I'm gonna guess Bill Clinton. Yeah, it was. There's pictures of Kennedy shaking Clinton's hand and those guys saying, you know, I mean, that was a, an impact that day, but I mean, for them to go to Boys Nation and uh, trying to get those two back together, they did a documentary on uh, one of the news shows a few years back that said, you know, it was uh, Boys to Men and they featured those two, Ramstead and Bateman in it, and it just, Fantastic. Well, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Oh. If people want more information, where can they go? Uh, we have a website. Mm -hmm. uh, website is ndboystate.org. Mm -hmm. uh, there's registration there. Yeah. And all right. All well, right. Good luck to you, Neil. Thanks for joining you us bet. today. You bet. Right. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. Facing their first political campaign in 1916. The nonpartisan league needed a candidate for governor who had the strength of character to carry the league's banner into a bloody campaign against a well-funded and unscrupulous political adversary, the Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce. That candidate was potato farmer Lynn Frazier from Hoople, North Dakota, the first governor elected by the nonpartisan league and the first governor in the United States to be recalled from office. They called him the gentleman from North Dakota because he was a man of great manners and 
great, very civilized individual. Fraser was very professional, very thoughtful, very well organized, a strong work ethic, which would I think probably be his greatest personal quality. And that's the center of his family life, is doing what a, a man should do in a Christian household, providing leadership, taking care of the future. You know, it's a big, big job. He was a straight-laced guy in Washington, D.C. He never went to any of the alcohol parties, which is how Congress worked even then. He always had people over to his house, family dinner. They'd get to sit down with his uh, family, his wife. They'd all sit there and have a big dinner and talk. So the man, fairly conservative in his own personal demeanor, considered probably one of the most virtuous family men and highly respected, but controversial at the same time. His pacifism and his ideas about government ownership as a way to achieve economic justice, those were fairly radical considering the Bolshevik Revolution. Oh boy, they painted him red and they painted him every color. But he was not a red and he was not a communist. He was a Christian. He was so religious, there's no way he could have ever followed Marx. He's a pretty deep thinker. He went to UND when there are some very, very good people over in the poli and econ department. He definitely understood politics, agricultural problems, as good as anybody that was alive at the time. He was, I think, an expert. Lynn Frazier felt very strongly that the American farmer, they should have complete and total control of their product and, and the right to sell it at the price they dictated. Frazier stood up in the Senate again and again and again and told him that's all the farmer wants and wanted to create something in the way of a marketing board. It would have been a very, very powerful economic institution and it would have added a great deal of wealth, I think, to the countryside. Actually, in Canada, they took Fraser's idea and implemented a, a full bore up there with the Canadian Wheat Board. I think he had uh, some influence in the development of the common agricultural policy after World War II. He very clearly articulated the benefits of the cartel. That's what the European Union does. Farmers in Europe have to sell to their government corporations, and then the government corporations sell. Farm prices are not set by markets, they're set by government panels. The farmers have a big say in the determination of agricultural prices. Farm prices are much higher in Europe than they are in the United States. He obviously got something more than uh, sleep time out of his economics. <laughs> he was not in favor of repealing prohibition. When they started debating it in 1930, Senator Edge uh, was talking about all the jobs that beer was going to create. <laughs> And Frazier got up and the Senate gave a speech about 20 minutes long that he had never really noticed the beer uh, got people working. <laughs> Lynn Frazier, he was a man that uh, made decisions, I think, based on principle rather than on political popularity. His pacifism, boy, he was a leader. Every single session that he was in the Senate, he introduced a constitutional amendment to prohibit the United States from entering war. When women's right to vote issue came, he assumed some leadership there, came right out in favor of it. When the bill was actually signed, there's a picture of that ceremony. And I, th I don't know, it's an awful lot of women that were invited to that signing. He was very, very happy to see women become part of the political process. Another thing I have to say about Fraser to show his humanity, he developed very good relationships with the Indian tribes in the state. They spoke very highly of him. He was on the Indian Affairs Committee. He actually got roads, a basic infrastructure into the reservation communities. He was the first politician that actually delivered bread and butter to the Indians, and the Indians had the utmost respect for the guy. North Dakotans can really be proud of him, although they've all forgotten him. When I ask people about Lynn Frazier, hardly ever do I run into someone in North Dakota that, oh yeah, Lynn Frazier, the governor that was recalled. They don't even know that. He did accomplish one heck of a lot more 
than even I imagined in my earlier days of researching him. As I've had a chance to look back on agricultural history in the world in the United States, I see that Fraser really was an original thinker and uh, highly motivated to do the actual hard work, willing to give up the place he loved, which was Hoople, North Dakota, go to Washington, D.C. And, and fight for all the people and try to get what he thought they wanted. But I think if he was disappointed, he carried it well and he carried it silently. Fraser's ideas were actually good ideas. And when he was knocked around and beat up pretty badly, did he turn into a whiner? No, nah, I have to admire that. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. But as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Humanities Council and by the members of Prairie Public. <laughs>